In this video, we're going to be learning how to test a React component that uses a REST API. The library that we're using is called Mock Service Worker. Our application is a simple to-do application that calls out to a REST API called JSON Placeholder. This is Coding with Adam, and let's get to the code. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, like, and share. This is the application. As I mentioned, it uses JSON placeholder to make two requests, one to get to do's and one to get the users. The data is then displayed in this table. If you go to JSON placeholder, you can see exactly the API requests that we're making. The first request that we do is for our to do's and the to do's include information like title and completed and also gives us a reference to the user ID. Then to get the user, we do another request for users and using that ID, we can figure out the name of the user. That information then is combined and displayed in this table. You can see the username, the to do title, and whether or not the item is completed. Having a quick look at the application code, we can take a look at app.js. App.js calls into our to-do list, which is in our components folder. When the to-do list component loads, it will call this use effect over here. This use effect will call retrieve to-dos. Retrieve to-dos does two fetches, one to get the to-dos and one to get the users. It then combines that information down over here so that each to-do has a user object. Finally, at the very end, we set our state. So as you can see, we define our state at the top for our to-dos, and then down over here, we set the state once we've loaded that data. Then we go ahead and display the to-dos over here. You can see we just do a to-dos.map, and for each item, we display it within this table. Now the challenge is that we need to test this component. This component is doing two API requests. Now, in order to make testing much easier, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a library called Mock Service Worker. This is a library that we're going to be installing and using. Let's go ahead and install that dependency. We're just going to do an npm i msw, and we're going to save that as a dev dependency. Now let's go ahead and start writing our tests. So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and add a new file for our to-do list. So we're just going to to-do list.test.js. We'll start by importing screen and render from testing library. We'll also import the component that we're testing, which is to-do list. And to-do list is in the same directory as our test. Now we can go ahead and define our first test. So our first test is it should have the correct to-do item clean room. We'll go ahead and define our arrow function. And then we're gonna render our component to-do list. With the component rendered, now we can go ahead and search for that to-do item clean room. The way we're gonna do this is we're gonna use await screen dot find by text. We're gonna find by text and look for clean room. And you'll notice that we're using await over here. So since we're using await, that means we're using asynchronous. We need to mark our method with async. And then lastly, what we do is we just do an expect. So we're gonna expect that to-do item to be visible on the screen. With our first test written, let's just do an npm run test and run all our tests. Once it finishes running over here, I'm just gonna hit enter so that it's doing a watch. Every time I click save, it'll rerun the tests. Go ahead and take a look at our test results over here. So we can see that our test is failing. It's failing when it tries to find the text clean room. This is exactly what we're expecting since we haven't implemented any of the API mocking. The two API calls that we're going to be mocking in our application are getting the to-do items and getting the users. So we're going to be using that library that I spoke of, MSW over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by importing something called REST from MSW. We'll also go ahead and import something called setup server. And setup server comes from MSW slash node. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create something called a server. So we're gonna define a server and it's going to be using our setup server over here. So we just call this and we get a server object. This is gonna represent the API that we're connecting to. Now that we set up our server object, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use it. Now, the way we're gonna use it is as follows. You may not be aware of this, but in Jest, you can run some code before every test runs and after every test runs. We're gonna be using these built-in Jest functions over here. Before every single test runs, we're gonna execute server.listen. After all the tests are done, we're gonna close that server. 
Now, after each individual test runs, we're going to reset something called the handlers. These are the gets and posts and all the different API calls that we're going to be doing. We're going to reset those values so they're brand new for each and every single test. Our application that we currently have right now is making a request to a server. Now, what this server object over here is going to do is it's going to intercept that request. It's going to know what the URL is and then send back different information when we run our test. We're going to provide this information to the server using this REST object over here. Let's start with our to-do response. We're going to define a variable called to-do response and it's going to be equal to REST.get. The first parameter that REST.get takes in is a URL. The URLs we're going to be using come from to-do list. I've already exported them both, so all we need to do is import them in our test. Back in our rest.get over here, we're just going to pass in that to do URL. Then we need to define an arrow function, something called a response resolver. This over here is the documentation for the response resolver. It takes in three parameters, the request, the response, and something called the contacts. Well, let's go ahead and implement this response. So all we're going to do is a return. We're going to use the response parameter that's passed in over here and we'll do a ctx.json and ctx.json is going to return an array just like the data that we get back from json placeholder and we're going to give it some objects inside of here so we'll give it an id of one for the to do we'll give it a user as well with an id of one a title. Now this title is going to be what we're looking for in our test which is clean room and if we choose to we can also give it the completed, which we're not using at this time, but we can pass it in. And now we have a response created for the to do response. Let's go ahead and also create our user response. So we'll do our user response is equal to rest.get. And once again, we pass in our user URL. Then we have our required response and CTX for our parameters for our arrow function. And then we do exactly the same thing, except we pass in different data. We return a response and we just do CTX.json. It returns an array. And then we're just going to give for our users, we're just going to get an ID. So you can see that we have user ID is one over here. So that matches up with the user ID here. And the only thing that we're using in our code from the users is the name. So I'm just gonna give this a Bruce Banner, the Hulk, and we have both of our responses. Now that we've created both of our responses, we need to pass those to the server. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna package these up inside of an array called handlers. And we'll just pass the to-do response there and the user response. And then all I'm going to do is destructure our handlers into our server and now our test will run and our test will be passing. The reason our test is passing is because now it has that REST API response returning the clean room and it's finding that text. And there you have it, a simple example using mock service worker. Additional tests that we could write is checking that it has the right user. So let's go ahead and write another test. And in this test, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check that it has the name Bruce Banner on the screen. Once again, we'll give it that arrow function. We'll mark it as async. If you want to make this test a little bit quicker, you can copy what we have above. And then instead of looking for clean room, we can look for Bruce Banner. We save that. Our test should be passing. Additionally, you could also expand your test to look for more items. At the moment, we're only getting clean room. Let's also get clean car. What I'm going to do is I'm going to modify our JSON request over here that we're getting for our to-do. And we're going to get another item. That item will be for a different user. It'll have a different user ID. And this one will be clean car. Now, with the current REST data that we have over here, we're going to get a failure. The reason we're getting a failure is that it's unable to find the user. If we scroll on up, we're going to see that the JSX over here is having an issue. It doesn't have a user object, so it's failing to get that name. So if we look at our REST API data that we're providing over here, you can see that our clean car, there's supposed to be a user with a user ID of two. Now, if we look at our users, we only have one user, Bruce Banner. We need to go ahead and add another user. Let's expand our users over here. And we're just going to duplicate that line over there with Bruce Banner. And what we'll do is we'll give the identifier of two, and we can just give it a new name and give it Clark Kent, Superman, save it. And now all our tests will be once again in a good state and passing. Now all we have to do is just 
copy these two tests over here to add additional tests to make sure that extra data is also being shown too. So instead of clean room over here, what we're going to do is replace this with clean car. And then instead of Bruce Banner down over here, we'll just replace that with Clark Kent. Go ahead and save that. And we got two more additional tests and they are all passing. One last thing I want to show you is how you can handle errors from the server. So our application, if we go to to-do list over here, when we're getting back data from the to-do response, we might encounter a server error, a 500 code. If we do encounter the 500 code, we call set has error and set it to true in our state. And then down in our HTML over here, you'll see that we display some text. Oops, come back later. Well, let's start by writing that test first. So I'm going to go to to-do list test. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy one of our old tests because it's almost the same. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rename it to should handle error message from to do. Then inside of our test, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab that text that we add for the error message over here. Oops, come back later. Go back into the test, paste that into the find text. Then I'll run the test and we're going to get a failure. The reason that we're getting that error is that it's unable to find that text. Oops, come back later. So we're going to be adding a new response. Back in our responses over here, we're going to define an error response. So it'll be a to do error response, which will be equal to a rest.get, and we'll give it the to do URL. And then we have that same method signature that we had before for the arrow function, except this time we're going to be returning a 500 error. To do that, all we have to do is return a response. And inside that response, we just do ctx.status and give it the HTTP code of 500. Now our test will still fail, even though it's rerunning because we're not using this to do error response. All we have to do is scroll down to our test and we're gonna override what's currently within our handlers on the server. So our server right now is using the to do response and user response. And within our test, we're going to say use this response instead. We're going to use the to do error response, save that, which will override the to do response that was already there. And now all our tests are passing. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial on testing components that use a REST API. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, like, and share. Once again, I think that subscribe button is somewhere here in the corner. Thanks.